Tourism is a growing segment in the tourism sector, which offers new levels of relationships between the host country and the visitor. What is appealing to the visitor is found among the varied natural attractions, local resources and talents, and indigenous attributes of a community in an area. Through visitor-community interaction, respective cultures are explored, ideas and information are exchanged, and new friends are made. It is increasingly becoming a way of sharing the natural resources of a local community with visitors from home and overseas for the sustainable benefit of the local community whilst conserving the natural environment and respecting local ways of life. Community tourism fosters opportunities at the community level for the local people wishing to participate in the tourism industry. It's a new avenue for communities to engage in income generating activities and is beneficial to both the communities and the travelers. Community tourism activities and services in Uganda are geared towards addressing these trends and to satisfy the interests of this emerging travel market. As a new generation of travelers worldwide seek more meaningful experiences from their leisure time, travel operators in Uganda are responding accordingly to introduce tourists to Uganda's extensive heritage. Sipi Falls, a series of waterfalls, can be viewed at three different points as they plunge down the lower slopes of Mount Elgon Ranges, East Africa's largest solitary volcano to Uganda's eastern border with Kenya. They are a key community tourism attraction in eastern Uganda. Descending the rocky cliff by rope is becoming a popular sport. Also known as abseiling, ropes drop tourists down the cliff adjacent to the main Sippy Falls, the tallest, which plunges at 100 meters. The next falls upstream is said to be 75 meters tall. This one consists of some upper cascades before making its plunge. The uppermost waterfall is 85 meters tall. One walks through the village, past a cave, and reaches the bottom of the falls where you can cool off in its misty waters. Communities living around Sippy River have set up accommodation facilities where tourists who seek the adventure of mountain climbing can stay. In the true spirit of the Sabini people who live around the area, accommodation for visitors is built using local materials to give one a true cultural experience. The Crow's Nest is one of the community tourism accommodation facilities in the area. It is built overlooking the main Sippy Falls. Sippy River Lodge offers one of the key viewing points near the bottom of the Twin Falls. Lake Bunyonyi, the place of many little birds, is located in southwestern Uganda near the border with Rwanda. It's about 25 kilometers long and 7 kilometers wide, with 29 islands doting the center of the lake, which is believed to be the second deepest lake in Africa. This spectacular scenery creates a big opportunity for nature lovers seeking relaxation in a pure, serene, unspoiled natural environment. Accommodation is run by community-based projects on the various islands to meet varying budgets and different needs. Bushara Island, only 15 minutes by motorboat, is one of the most popular destinations on the lake. Transfer from the mainland to the 16 hectares Bushara Island camp is free. 
It has eight furnished tents with large patios, which are covered by a papyrus thatched roof. Additionally, the Kingfisher and Peter Cottages offer one and two bedroom facilities for those unsure about a night under canvas. All tents are strategically located with a view of the lake and they're comfortably furnished with either two single beds or two double beds. Each is privately situated, hidden behind shrubbery and trees with its own bathing facility. Bushara Island is not complete until one has experienced the Bachiga culture, the people who live around Lake Bunyonyi. Children from Bafuka Orphan School present traditional Chichiga dances and invite tourists to participate and have an enriching experience. Donations are much valued here since they go towards catering for the children's scholastic materials and their other needs. As the night falls, the Ananga draws one to the fireside where you're regaled with stories and yet more dancing. The tradition and pride of these people is passed on from one generation to the next, epitomized by stories and energetic dancing. Revenue from Lake Bunyonyi community tourism projects has contributed towards setting up other projects in Bafuka village on the shores of Lake Bunyonyi. Promotion of employment is done through vocational skills education supported by Lake Bunyonyi development projects where hotel management and tourism, catering and cooking classes are offered. In the nearby secondary school, girls learn tailoring all thanks to revenue from the community tourism projects around the lake. Uganda as a nation was merged from many small kingdoms and chiefdoms. Its hospitable people still maintain a real sense of strong culture and heritage, which is noticeable among 40 various cultures through music and dance, costumes, languages and food. Of the over 48 different tribes, the Baganda form the largest tribe found in the central region around the shores of Lake Victoria. The current Kabaka, the head of the kingdom, was coronated at Nagalari in 1993. He met and married Sylvia Najin Daluswata, the Nabagerika, or Queen, in 1998, and the royals are much loved by their subjects across the kingdom. They are keen promoters of community tourism around the kingdom cultural sites. Clans were the administrative units in Buganda. They formed a centralized system of government, which was one of the most well-organized administrative structures in the Interlacustine region by 1750. Clan leaders, heads of the 52 clans, are highly respected members of the society. Cultural sites of the Baganda are key community tourism sites. Kasubi tombs, the burial site of the Baganda kings, are a must-see for those seeking an insight into the culture and history of the kingdom. Built in 1882 and converted into the royal burial ground in 1884, they hold four royal tombs within the Muzibu Azalampanga, the main building, which is circular and surmounted by a dome. 
The tombs were designated a UNESCO Cultural Heritage Site in 2001 due to their significance in Buganda culture. The architecture of organic materials, principally wood, thatch, reed and wattle, is of historical value. But the site's main significance lies in its intangible values of belief, spirituality, continuity and identity. Kasubi Tombs stands today as a major spiritual center for the Baganda and is one of the most active religious places in the kingdom. Tribes of Uganda, like the Nilotic tribes of northern Uganda, are also famous for their interesting culture, music, and dance. Nyankole in western Uganda are also known for their culture which revolves around their long-horned cattle and that includes their dance. Most dances in Uganda are accompanied by an array of traditional music instruments, harps, xylophones, and of course, the inescapable drumming. The tribes of the East, like the Basoga, have unique waist-shaking dance routines. from around Mount Elgon dance as they celebrate their circumcision, a rite of passage from male youth into manhood. <laughs> Uganda's tropical climate makes it easy to grow different organic foods which are prepared in a variety of ways according to each region. Banana gardens, matoke, can be seen as one drives across the countryside. It's an important food for the people of central Uganda and other southern tribes. It's mostly steamed to cook. The banana leaves are also used in steaming other food during the preparation process. Uganda's varied biodiversity, especially around protected areas, national parks and game reserves, offers yet more opportunities for community tourism. Bomo Women's Group, a 40-member women's organization, was formed in 1999 in Masindi to utilize the proximity to Murchison Falls National Park to create income-generating activities in a bid to fight poverty. Members come together to make handcrafts and show tourists how baskets are made. They have established a craft shop along the road to Murchison Falls National Park which stocks a variety of handcrafts where tourists can stop over to buy a souvenir from the area. The project also offers an insight into the way of life of the Banyoro people who live around the area. Among the trees and to the continuous sound of chirping birds are the traditionally built tourist bandas that offer a unique accommodation experience at reasonable rates. 
The site also offers cleared grounds for camping where tourists can simply relax and enjoy the abundance of tropical sunshine in a perfect natural environment. Nature walks are another worthy activity to pursue, especially along the edge of Uganda's national parks. After exploring the natural rainforests of Kibale National Park, seeing the chimpanzees, one of the many primates that inhabit the forests, one can find accommodation in the various community tourism projects around the park, buy crafts, and explore local cultures. Alternatively, the community dance troops come to the tourist lodge inside the park and present an array of traditional songs, music and dance depicting the culture of the people who live around the park. Whilst in the Queen Elizabeth National Park area, travelers can visit one of the oldest salt mines in Uganda, where salt is still mined in a traditional way. Ancient methods of salt mining used since the 14th century are still in use today. Salt production peaks during the dry season. This site is popular with students who come for study tours. They get an opportunity to see firsthand the impact of geographical formation that led to the creation of Crater Lakes, and they're able to see how salt is mined. A key resource for community tourism projects are the many swamps and forests that dote Uganda and supply materials for making of the different types of handcrafts. Handcrafts, especially baskets, were originally made for functional purposes, but they now take on several decorative roles. Craft makers, especially women, have branched out and taken Western concepts like handbags and incorporated them into their craft, coming up with products that are suitable for the international markets. So, come to Uganda and enjoy our community tourism activities. Community tourism contributes to the mutual understanding and respect between peoples and societies. It's a vehicle for individual and collective fulfillment. It's an emerging factor in sustainable development. Community tourism is also a user of the cultural heritage of mankind and a contributor to its enhancement. It's a beneficial activity for Uganda, the host country, and its communities.